from Burlingame, California, it's theCUBE. Covering Sumo Logic Illuminate 2019. Brought to you by Sumo Logic. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at Sumo Logic Illuminate at the Hyatt Regency San Francisco Airport. Our second year here, about a thousand people. Third year of the conference, a really good vibe. And, and you know, I think it's one of these cases where the market has really come to Sumo Logic in terms of data and data monitoring. And there's so many applications around business and security and, and operations. We're excited to have our next guest. He is Lior Meklevich. He's an architect at Informatica. Lior, great to see you. Great to see you too. Absolutely. So you said you've been coming to this for a couple years. Just kind yeah, of general impression. As it's, uh, as it's grown. Sure, it's my third year. It's grown very nicely. Uh, I'm always exciting. I think there's a very nice vibe to, to this conference. Um, I always learn new things. So we've been with Sumo for more than four years now at Informatica. Um, and excited as always. Yeah, and we've yeah. been covering the Informatica show, I think all we looked it up since 2015, so we've been doing a lot of work, and you guys are right in the mm -hmm. heart of this whole, this whole data thing, and, and right. you've been part of the kind of migration from pretty much pure on-prem to cloud, is rushed to public cloud, and then now kind of this hybrid model. So as, as you kind of look at the data perspective, you know, what's kind of your take as this thing has evolved over the last several years? Sure, so we have been around for 26 years, I think building a lot of on-prem data platforms for you know, being the enterprise cloud data management that Informatica sells with basically getting your data inside or outside the organization. Um, from clouds, on-prem, or whatever integration pattern you have. And we decided four or five years ago to be a cloud-first company and migrated most of our products to be on cloud, to provide them as a service. And for us, it was an, an, a huge journey. We needed to take some offering that we had in the cloud, some um, products, and really revamp and, and building a new microservice architecture, and then slowly migrate all the customers. So it took us over a year to make that. We, we currently run on all three cloud providers, um, and really using Sumo and monitoring tools to really understand the impact that we have on our customers during right. this migration. Um, it was a very successful, uh, they hardly noticed that oh, we good. changed. <laughs> Only the nice UI, but they hardly noticed the problems that, I mean, we really change a lot of things. And well, what are some of the things yeah. you learned in that process that you can apply now with, with just some of your customers in terms of yeah. data migration and operating in a cloud uh, situation versus a traditional data center? Sure, so um, I would definitely highlight the need to be able to roll back and the need to always keep really good monitoring it and understanding how the end user is getting impacted. Right, so we really kept that in mind. Everything we do, um, try to always do it side by side. So, and then when we migrate, we're really sure that it is successful and there's no impact on the customer. So I think that's definitely too, har harshly monitor everything and be able to roll back when you need to. Because right. you will need to at some point. So. Right. But the rollback yeah. is funny because it used to be you had, you know, the, the release cadence was significantly slower than now, and now yeah. you've got, you know, all these kind of micro pushes that are going out multiple times a day. Yeah. So how do you, how does that impact, you know, kind of keeping that safety net and that rollback safety net? So it's interesting. So we actually don't deploy that many times a day. Um, we keep the where we can really impact the customer. So we deploy um, the things that are not customer urgent impacting production more, but still the really heavy production stuff that really impact the customer, we try to um, minimize that and make it a very customer aware. Okay, right. so basically they choose their own windows of maintenance and all that, but our customers, again, hospitals, um, all kind of very important to uh, them. We, we are in charge of the data pipeline in those, uh, in those places, so we don't want to just push whatever we can. We really cannot take that, even the rollback of 1% of the customers, it can be very bad, so we're a bit of more conservative models of deployments, okay. but it actually means we push, put a lot of efforts in our monitoring um, what is going on during those deployments. Right. All right, okay. so one of the big trends that happened, uh, I mean, containers have been around for a while, but we really saw kind of the rise of containers in terms of right. the popular consciousness with Docker a couple, three, four years ago, and then a couple of years ago, right, the, the Kubernetes coming in for the orchestration. From your point of view, you know, how, how have those things impacted your world and, and how you do your job and take care of your customers? Sure, so for us, Kubernetes is, is really a great opportunity to standardize the way that we deploy across different products. So we have uh, our platform, but we have also different products, different people across the globe. We're a very multi-globe multi uh, organization. And to get a standard like Kubernetes to help us 
um, standardized to get more releases, more stable environments. Um, that really solves a lot of problems because we had this migration that I told about really left us with a lot of clusters across the globe, different time zones. It was really hard to standardize on the pipelines and to deploy to really minimize the problems that we give to the end user at the end. Right. Um, so we really took that opportunity to use Kubernetes, to use containers to minimize the difference it has from the developer machine all the way to production, um, to automate the most as we can. So Kubernetes really is excelling in this. Yeah. So that's where we really took those containers apart. So we, we, today we are in migrating, so not all of that, but we truly see the benefits of standardization, of immutable infrastructure as the key components for right. us. It's just so great, because you yeah. have such kind of a longitudinal point of view having been, you know, the company's been at it for a while and you've been at the company yeah. for a while. So another topic I'd love to get your thought is just kind of this exponential explosion of data. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd be curious not to know the numbers, but you know, kind of the, the scale of data in which you guys are dealing with for yeah. your customers and how that has changed over the last several years before you even really factor in, you know, IoT and, mm -hmm. and, and this next kind of machine to machine uh, explosion. Right, so we definitely see that explosion of data. Um, and, and it's not just the explosion, it's also the different types and where data has been on-prem, now moving to cloud, where people want to run all those workloads, has of course a lot of impact for us as well. We need to support all the cloud providers when we used to do a lot of uh, Hadoop on-prem, right? It's all changed now to right. all the cloud providers. Uh, the data is there, so the data move, data locality is a big thing. Now we need to run all those things uh, on the cloud. Um, so I don't remember the exact numbers. I guess we're doing some kind of a 2.5 billion transactions a month, like number of records that we serve. Um, th that being, we usually just see more workloads, more, more people, more uh, use cases for onboarding more data from cloud applications, right? So it's just more, they, the data became more dispersed. Not just more data, right. but the sources has become, like everybody needs to integrate Salesforce or Workday with their on-prem. That gives unique opportunities for right. this kind of data. Well, and it's funny you talk yeah. about the workloads because it always used to be, you know, do you bring the workload to the data and the, or the right. data to the workload? And a knock on the cloud is that you got to get all that, all that data into the cloud mm -hmm. and pay for the transport of the data. Right. And there's data gravity. That said, once you have it in a central location like that, the 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 opportunity to put applications against that data is much much higher than right. if you're bringing the uh, the data to the application. You right. see in that, how, how are customers taking advantage of that opportunity? So for sure we saw, you know, the data does move to the cloud, right? The thing that we, when we started Informatica Cloud 10 years ago, our entire model was hybrid, so you can still run on-prem because the data was on-prem. And since then, our hybrid model, uh, that you can still run both on-prem and on cloud, you can see the change, right? You can see more of our agents, we have an agent-based architecture, to really being deployed much more on EC2s, on, EKS on whatever to run those workloads in the cloud. Right, yeah. but I would imagine that the, the number of workloads applied to each data set now have increased significantly because yeah. now it's in that central repository. Yes, uh, definitely you can see those data lakes being built and uh, mostly in the cloud. And that, that does give unique opportunity. Right. Yeah. So just get your perspective after a couple of days here, I know you haven't been here for a couple of days, we're just getting started at the show. Yeah. You know, what, what does Sumo Logic bring to you and your team, what does it enable you to do that you couldn't otherwise do? Why are you happy to be uh, be a customer of Sumo? Sure, so far and foremost, it's the democratization of data. I really like to say that internally. Um, to be able, you know, multi, in an organization that's spread across the globe, really sharing uh, insights based on data, it's very important, right? And, and when you have many R&D centers that can just send this Sumo query, send the data and show people what they mean, save so much time. Right, so we use it across, we use the customer success, uh, product management to understand feature being used, um, SREs, developers, all of those really can communicate based on data, right? And we can, in this microservice world, you cannot do it without, without that. You cannot do it without linking, because the different products that we onboard on the platform will not be able to communicate effectively without that. Right. But that's very important. And giving that landing pages, dashboard, templates for onboarded services, to have this kind of a standard of how to monitor, how to operate, that's very important for, right. for us. Yeah, that's and, great, yeah. go ahead, I'm sorry, I interrupted Sorry, and, and the, uh, the key place that we brought Sumo in is basically for incident management. So how to understand when something doesn't work, just to try to understand the place trade use, which products are impacted, we have a variety of products, so um, just in minutes, we minimize, I think, for hours to minutes, trying to understand what exactly is going on, who's impacted, to update the customer, the trust site, and all that. 
Right. Yeah, that's the. But I love I love the part you talked about the democratization because yeah. again, uh, I, I talk about it all the time. And I'll talk about it again. But no. you know, to drive innovation in a company, uh, you know, I think such a key piece of it is to enable more people to have more information and the tools to manipulate that information. So yeah. they see opportunities to make improvements here, there, and otherwise. And it sounds like you guys are Definitely. really using it for that, that uh, we, use case. You know, when you get uh, some people that you never knew that even know, you know, we have a um, customer support guys that did some crazy dashboards that we, you know, in R&D, we had no idea it's possible even. And you know, they're really getting chance to work with customers better, to really tell the customer, oh, you just did that and that, maybe you'll try this option. And um, we found that even communicating and really minimize the time it takes for them to understand what's right. going on, that has been really impactful. With no call to IT and, to and help. And it was never the intent, <laughs> right? So we right. wanted to allow devs and ops to operate. Right. And all of a sudden you're getting customer support without even telling them. Right. So. That Good. Has been well, uh, well, Lior, thanks for sharing your uh, your story, and really sure. appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. All right, he's Lior. I'm Jeff. You're watching the Cube. We are at Sumologic Illuminate 2019. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.